Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate closed loop simulation of CUC converter in MATLAB. In case you have not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it. Only then you will get regular updates with respect to the videos that we post. Alright, let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a CUC converter in closed loop operation in MATLAB. So just to give you an overview of how the circuit looks like, I have just given it uh, with respect to MATLAB file. So uh, the design procedure and uh, simulation of CUC converter in open loop is already discussed in one of our previous videos it will be available in the end screen as well as in the description so in case you want to watch how to design them actually with respect to l1 c1 l2 c2 r values please do watch that video it will gives you a great idea of how to design the circuit as well so uh, once that is done let's get started let's go to matlab and start our simulation with respect to closed loop model all right uh, in matlab we have simlink library browser so search for powergu block we will be searching the components that we need and that is convenient rather than looking at uh, these uh, options so we will be requiring a voltage measurement block add that block as well uh, we will be requiring a mosfet which is used as a switch we are not going for thyristor because we need an external commutation circuit to turn them off how we can try it using igpt as well so once this is done we will be requiring a series rlc branch so search for series RLC later we can convert it to inductor capacitor and resistor based on the type of network that we want we will be requiring a diode as well so search for diode uh, and scroll a little down choose the ones that are there in black for power electronic applications and uh, once that is done uh, we will be requiring a scope in order to see how the output waveform looks like so search for scope and uh, add this block as well so once we've added up uh, we will be uh, looking for the feedback elements so we'll be requiring a constant block uh, in the feedback path so which is for the closed loop operation so search for constant uh, you will be getting it right at the top add this block once this is done we need a dc voltage source as well uh, we have missed that block so add that uh, over here and uh, once we've added that we need a pa controller so we can search for controller in order to get that so search for controller and uh, add that block so we will be adding pid controller in s domain later on we can change it based on our requirement if in case we need that uh, we will be subtracting the signals at the output terminals in closed loop so search for sum uh, you will be getting both sum and subtract block as well so add subtract block once this is done uh, we will be requiring a block called abs which uh, takes the absolute value of the signal after the output of the PID controller so that is very important so add that block and we need a repeating se sequence so we will be searching for repeating sequence and add that block um, and then so we will be requiring uh, a relational operator so search for a relational operator over here and uh, we will be changing it to greater than or equal to later on uh, based on our requirements so we can or directly choose greater than or equal to over here as that block um, once this is done we have uh, used all the components that we have obtained them uh, so we can place them in appropriate positions in order to get started with our circuit diagram here we are so at the first place we will be using this as an inductor which is basically l1 and its value is chosen to be equal to 820 micro henry based on our design so enter that value into 10 power minus 6 and click on ok and uh, once that is done we will be connecting the train in this particular fashion double click on this and disable the measurement port we are not using it so let's disable it for the diode as well usually it will be available for the switches so we'll be disabling them and the diode is connected in this particular fashion you'll be having a capacitor at this point so we will be copy pasting this later on we can change it to capacitor which is basically c1 and our value is chosen to be equal to 7.92 microfarad so enter the value uh, 7.92 so once this value is entered we will be copy pasting this inductor again uh, so that uh, we will be connecting it after the diode so control c and then control v at this point and then uh, we'll be changing it val its value uh, the value of l2 according to our design is eight, 681 micro henry so enter the value 681 micro henry and once that is done we will be uh, connecting a capacitor which is basically c2 so control c and then rotate it at this position double click on it and change the value to be equal to 3.33 microfarad according to our design so in case you've not seen the design procedure please do watch it um, i have included 
included in my previous videos and it will be available in the end screen as well so control c control v we will be requiring a resistive load choose the value of resistor to be equal to 15 ohms so once that is done we will be enclosing the circuit in this particular fashion um, and connect the load at this point so uh, we will be measuring the voltage at the load which is with respect to the resistor uh, resist load in this case so connect the uh, voltmeter between these two points and then we'll be giving it to the scope the output is given to the scope in this particular fashion now comes the concept of the feedback path so uh, we will be entering the parameter of the supply voltage as well uh, we have not entered that so it is 25 volt according to our design and uh, now comes the concept of the feedback path so uh, plus terminal will usually be given here so we are designing uh, our circuit for minus 30 volt isn't it so enter minus 30 over here and then we will be taking the voltage from the output terminals compare them so whatever voltage you are supposed to get at the output enter it as reference this is the reference block so give it to the PID controller double click on the PID controller and we'll be changing a few parameters here uh, we are not using proportional we only want integral controller so this will basically improve the response of the system with respect to the waveform and that's the reason why we are using that so once that is done uh, we will be uh, giving this to uh, just rotate this block in this particular fashion and uh, we'll be giving it to the absolute value so whatever you're getting only the absolute value of the signal will be taken and it will be given over here and it will be compared with a repeating sequence which is basically a sawtooth waveform over here so it is just just like uh, the concept of pulse width modulation in case you remember is with respect to inverters it's also explained in one of our videos how to perform pulse width modulation so based on that in case uh, of closed loop simulation with respect to boost and buck converter we had a different approach but this will uh, this will uh, be followed in this particular way in case you try to follow the older one you will definitely not get the output so be very careful in uh, having uh, the feedback elements in this particular fashion um, now once all the parameters are entered uh, one important thing to remember is with respect to the relational operator we have uh, nothing to change but with respect to repeating sequence we have to give our frequency that is 25,000 I mean 25 kilohertz isn't it and the output values is with respect to 1 so change these two values and time period is 1 by t and that's the reason why I've chosen this so based on this click on ok and once this is done we have entered all the parameters according to our circuit let us choose the simulation time to be equal to 0.5 seconds and let us click on run uh, so that we'll see what is the output voltage we are supposed to get around minus 30 volt so let's look at the output voltage so if you double click on the scope in order to see the waveform we can zoom this particular portion and we are getting minus 30 this is basically the ripple so it doesn't matter the average value will be minus 30 volts so we can further reduce the ripple by using uh, suitable values of capacitors and inductors so this is how we will be simulating in closed loop but one more important thing how do we justify this is a closed loop operation so for that let us try to change the supply voltage say equal to 20 volt there will be specific tolerance uh, we cannot change it to any value as such but within a certain range uh, 25 20 or 15 or 30 or 28 less than the value that you are giving here so uh, we will be uh, simulating that and check what is output voltage if it is in closed loop mode we should still get minus 30 volt at the output terminals so that is the reason why we'll say it is in closed loop if it is open loop if we change the supply voltage output voltage should also change but in this case the output voltage should not change the variations should be accomplished and the pulses should be generated according to the supply voltage and we still have to get minus 30 volt let us see that let's double click on the scope and if you carefully see we are getting minus 30 volt uh, observe this particular portion the ripples are very high uh, so uh, nevertheless that is not going to matter as far as the simulation is concerned so we are getting an average value of minus 30 volt uh, which is exactly what we want so even if we change the supply voltage the output voltage is constant at minus 30 volt that means we are getting our exact output that we want so this is how we will justify the closed loop operation I hope the simulation of the converter in closed loop is understood uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions uh, please do subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you